anytime. Well, we welcome all of you to this space. We don't uh, have anyone present today, no laugh track. Uh, all we have is the presence of the Holy Spirit and the, the great cloud of witnesses that go before us. I want to thank those that tuned in last week to our YouTube channel. We had over 301 to this, uh, as of this viewing, who viewed our uh, um, worship service online. I want to thank my mom for her 200 views. <laughs> I especially want to give a shout out to, if I'm not mistaken, the Canadian comedian or Canadian comic. Canadian comic. Thank you. You're awesome. You're the only one that commented <laughs> in a positive way. Thank you so much for uh, uh, paying attention. I feel loved. You're awesome. <laughs> too, dude. Keep it up. Um, so as we prepare uh, this time of worship, we ask that uh, you remember that even though we have to keep social distancing, I hope that you are huddled with your loved ones and uh, are ready to prepare yourselves for what we hope is going to be a solid connection with the Spirit of God. He's in your place. You are the church. This is a building. He has never left you or forsaken you, and he never will. So realize that your home is now, as it always has been, a sacred space. And come and be present as we give joy to the Lord. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Holy, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on the everlasting arms. No, oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms oh and what have i to dread what have i to fear leaning on the everlasting arms i have blessed peace with my lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms oh leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms leaning on the Let us pray. Almighty God, as we stand in awe of your goodness and mercy today, we invite you to be present among us here and, of course, at home. We declare that we love you. We thank you that you have made the way of love known through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would reveal that great love to us all today as we gather in worship in our homes. Lead us by your spirit to praise you. May our hearts overflow with thanksgiving and our mouths proclaim your everlasting greatness. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, one thing that we expect, and we will continue as we do our regular order of worship as best we can, uh, that you might take this time, uh, as we call for an offering, to consider 
um, writing out something and putting it in the mail to us. We, I believe fully that God will take care of us day to day and week to week, and you will be the providers of that as you are able in this time. As you are faithful, God will continue to be faithful. We also, of course, thank those that have already given online. Um, that is a critical component um, in this time. So we thank you, and we call upon you to meditate in this time of offering while you are going to consider doing it. Thank you. Oh, and I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. We sing your good, your good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, oh, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but i know that we're all searching for answers only you can provide because you know just what we've seen before we we say a word oh because you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am oh it's who i am it's who i am we sing this together you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us. As we proclaim that together, you are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Yes, you are perfect in all of your ways to us. Because you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am because you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us. And now we'll join together in song as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Almighty God, we ask that you help us to be generous givers both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in this town. We ask this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave all that he was the fulfillment of all of the promises that we will ever need. Amen. Great.
I want to thank uh, Brad and Taylor. The good thing about not having a, a group of people here, this is our 13th take. <laughs> okay. Um, we're struggling, but uh, God is good. And because, uh, you know, you have to do this all in one or it's not going to, that's our first take. You know we leave all of our faults and foibles in this. All right, so here's the big question of the week. Has anyone killed anyone yet? Do we need to do online marriage counseling? What's going on here? I'm always concerned. I hear a little bit about what's going on in the community, but I certainly um, hope that uh, this new opportunity for all of this togetherness is a positive and remember, parents of teenagers, they're easier to take if you do let them sleep till 1, 2 in the afternoon. That's okay, because then, you know, the time with them is, is shorter. So think about that as we go forward here today. That's kind of this, inf and, and we're taking this all week to week as far as what I'm preaching about. I'm trying to be encouraging in a relevant way in this time of struggle um, that we all are having and concern that we should rightly all have in this time. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we live in an area that uh, can be such a strong community if we choose to be. But uh, in this time of uh, confinement, it reminds me of uh, the stresses that can be a part of that. If you remember as a younger person, I certainly do, the, 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 the long drawn out vacations that we thought would kind of never end. First you drive a long way and you're all packed in the car or the station wagon or whatever kind of cattle truck that your parents owned. And then you had to go to wherever. In our household, we always left at like 3 in the morning to avoid traffic. So we would wake up and we're like, this is just miserable. And we were always reminded, well, you know, the vacation isn't for you, son. Um, and that's just the way my parents were, and they wanted to get on the road and get miles behind them. And so, of course, we were grouchy and ouchy as uh, my sister and brother and I would drive um, in the back seat of the car as we would. Uh, luckily, it was in the summer, so we could have the windows down at least, you know, because both my parents at that time smoked. And, uh, of course, it can be very uncomfortable when you go on family trips in the wintertime and the windows are all rolled up. Uh, but I digress. So what it is that uh, you do is you, you drive to your vacation spot and then you're there kind of as a captive audience. The expectation is that you get out and about. But sometimes, especially young people, you kind of run through all of the things that you're able to do and then you're bored and then you start doing what you do best. You gripe at each other. You snap at each other. You argue. You fight. You don't get along. And so you unsettle your parents' vacation. These are unsettling times. This is a similar um, situation that we are in. Hopefully you're able to go out. But if it lasts, there's going to be a time where you're just like, I'm, I'm just bored and everyone's going to know about it. That doesn't exactly help out all the time. I remember a trip that we took as a, this is the only folksy story I really got today and I don't want to bore you too much, but uh, there was a trip that we went on uh, to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and we went with my parents' best friends, uh, George and Carol Bachman, and their two kids, and actually if I have my memory uh, serving me correctly, George Bachman, a long time ago, was the manager of the Kroger here in Rochester, which we know. So my mom reminded me, I, I think this was like in the 70s or 80s, so most of you wouldn't know that, but that I had been to Rochester, which I didn't know. I thought I only drove by it for 50 years, but apparently we came to visit them. Anyway, we went down to Tennessee, 
and we stayed in uh, A-frame for two weeks, or was it two years? It just seemed forever. And we did all of the things that, you know, we could do, and we went to town, and we did, you know, various outdoorsy things, and and we began to revert to what we did best, which is pick on each other and be generally annoying to anyone around us. Well, George is an outgoing guy and just kind of always a man of action. And one day he said to my brother and I, let's go on a hike. And... Uh, it really wasn't what we wanted to do. We wanted to go home and uh, watch TV, and that was an option. So we went on a hike with George, my brother and I, and uh, there was woods all around, and we were gone for well over an hour when we realized that George wasn't tromping through the woods anymore. He was stopping and looking around, and looking around, and then we're tromping again, and then he stopped again, and looking around, and looking around. And uh, my brother and I, who were kind of bickering the whole time anyway, because, you know, the mosquitoes, it was hot, and we were just whining, uh, and you get the briar patches. We were in shorts. We were stupid to wear shorts, short sleeves. We were stupid to wear short sleeves. We just got this, and we were whining and whining. And my brother said, I think we're lost. And, uh, well, that was sobering. So we, we, you know, we didn't say anything out loud to George. We, we did kind of quiet down uh, temporarily. And, and then we came upon a, a broken down cinder block thing that didn't, it was kind of muddy area. And in the muddy area, now, I don't know a lot about outdoorsy things. I didn't then. I do now. <laughs> I'm just a woodsman. Anyway, <laughs> Daniel Boone. Anyway, we saw in the mud bear tracks. I know what bear tracks look like. George knew what bear tracks looked like. George got all tense when he saw the bear tracks because now he's worried. And he got really quiet. My brother and I, however, got really loud. And uh, we started arguing even worse. And so for the next hour, as we're watching, walking around, we're looking down for bear tracks. The togetherness of two hours of my brother and I, and I don't think that we spent that much time ever in our young lives growing up except sleeping in the same room that much time together. Well, we were going at it. We were like, you're a jerk, you're a sissy, you're a punk, blah, 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 blah. And my brother says, I hope the bear eats you. And then Mr. Bachman snapped, and he turned around, and he said, I hope the blankety-blank bear eats both of you. And we were like, whoop. And we found our way back, and uh, the usually always smiling George was not smiling when we were done. And uh, after a few cryptic but well-placed comments to my parents, you know, the, the wrath of God came down upon us because the, the, it was, it, 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 I don't know if it was, it was a combination of the tension and the too much togetherness with my brother and I, who now I love dearly and is a dear, dear uh, part of my life, but growing up, we... We were oil and water. It just didn't work out. That just shows how God can morph people and relationships in enough time and if you let them. But at the time, the tension and the togetherness was too much. You may be experiencing some of that yourself as well. The tension and too much togetherness can lead to pressure and pressure can lead to despair or frustration or anger, anger because this is a limited uh, time, but it's still 
we don't know how much limit it is yet. And so um, we struggle with trying to understand um, how to get along in this time of pressure and frustration, how we exhibit grace under fire. Now, I'm going to be reading some words from the first letter that Peter wrote because he knew and knew at this time what it was to uh, be under pressure. And uh, it was a little worse than what we're going through um, presently, but it's still relatable. When Peter wrote his first letter, the church was being severely persecuted <clears throat> and uh, um, they were despondent and they did not know which way to look for relief, some kind of relief. And like all good apostles and saints, Peter puts the things in the perspective that they need to be put in. So I'm going to read through this, and then we'll pick some of it apart. I'll add some of my own insight, which is what you're all waiting for anyway. And we'll go from here. It's the first letter of Peter in the first chapter, but we're starting with the fifth verse, and it's kind of in the middle of a sentence, but uh, it'll, it'll make sense as we go along. Verse 5 said, Who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time? Who through faith, who us? They were waiting for the second coming. They were being persecuted and they're waiting and waiting and waiting and it's open-ended. How long do we wait, Peter? Well, and we still wait. In this, you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. <laughs> now we talked last week about the general disruptions that we have had to undergo. Every family knows what those look like, I'm afraid. When our routines are restricted, when the peace that we once had is no longer there because of a full house, or when the peace that we have becomes tedious because it's loneliness and you can't be with others like you normally do and get out and about, pressures mount and tensions become greater within our lives and our mind starts playing weird tricks on us. Peter understands through the persecution that folks are looking for relief, just as we are in our own way, are looking for relief from this virus and this seclusion that we are undergoing. When can we get back to normal? Peter, in his context, tries to say, this is temporary. And let me echo when I say, this virus and this time is temporary. I can't tell you when it's going to end, but I can tell you it's going to end. 
And so our only hope is our day-to-day -day understanding that we are all in this together. Everyone is undergoing the same type of trial. We all are trapped. We are all in uncertain time. We all are looking for a place in which to find relief. We are being tested. There's no doubt about it. We are being tested. <clears throat> This is a time that, as Peter said, is going to refine us. And in the end, it may also define us. How do we react? How do we respond? What is it that is going to be remembered when we go through this time? It rains on the just and the unjust. The question that we have as a community of faith, what is it that you can do when the skills and the calling through Christ Jesus, our Lord, that we've been empowered with, with the Holy Spirit, we're kind of not allowed to use right now. We're not allowed to use it. We, we can't go visit the sick. We can't take food to the hungry unless it's uh, on a limited basis within our own families usually. We, we can't do the things that uh, the church has historically done during times of plague. Part of it is because we're smarter. We know now that you're going door to door, you could spread this and you're, you may be bringing the spirit of joy, but you're also bringing a strain of flu. It is deadly. So what is it that we can hope for? Peter gives a little insight in the midst of this, and it is perspective. It is an important thing. I, I, I really believe that 90 percent of our condition is defined by our perspective. You have some who have everything that they could want in the world and it's not enough, and some people who don't have enough and yet are contented. So how do we <clears throat> look at this? I quote the standard that we're called to as a people of faith from Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Not what we think our purpose is, but to his purposes. Because we are more than conquerors. We are called out of a natural understanding of the world to a spiritual and transcendent understanding of the world. And so by that I mean there are some things that seem like it's common sense. In a time of struggle like this, it tends to evoke the fight or flight syndrome. How do we take care of our own? And yet, is that all there is to the current situation? And what I mean by that is do we make decisions out of fear or out of triumph? Now, I know that everyone has had struggles in their life and, and disasters that befall all of us personally at times, and we've been able to marshal certain forces so that we can be a comfort and a help in these times of trials of other people. But now we have a general situation, 
And not only is it uh, a common struggle, but there are certain tools that we've been asked not to use. So I've come up with just a couple of simple things, just besides washing our hands and keeping social distancing in order to help us get through this time. Don't make me go to take 14. You don't want to go to take 14. So here's just a, a couple of things to remember, and, and it's important. I know last week we talked about personal disciplines, and I want to emphasize, of course, as I always will, the praying end of that. Pray, 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 pray. Pray for everybody that you can. Take large swaths of time and go and pray for people. I watched the Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood uh, movie um, with Tom Hanks in it. Uh, may God protect him. And uh, they, they, what a holy man he was. Um, b boring as dirt to me. But I could see where just the blessing of his countenance and presence could make such a difference in people's lives. And one of the things that he did every day is he prayed for people who asked for his help. Now, I like to be more specific. You can pray however you want. I, I hope, and, and if I'm going to, in fact, I'll have uh, Kelly send out a list to make sure, if not a, a directory, just like the names of everyone in the church as well as, of course, our regular prayer list, but everyone in the church and how Tom Hanks showed the, the, the prayer is he would say, and, and Lord, I ask for your special blessing and power to move in these lives. And then he'd read a name, take a breath or two, then read another name. You don't have to do it like, you can do it however you want, but it doesn't have to be like when I was a kid and we would pray at night and it was God bless mommy, God bless daddy, God bless. It doesn't have to be that way. Take a moment and read a name and then take a breath and read another name. Visualize and imagine, even if you don't know that person personally, that God is spreading his love and taking care of something in their lives. You, you don't have to do 200 names, do 50 names a day. When my prayer journal, I do 25 names, and then I repurpose it. Use the prayer list, but use the name of everyone because we are all in this together. We all need peace and relief in this time of stress because people are stressing out and they're reacting in ways that maybe they wouldn't normally react under, but they're still struggling. And so it kind of comes out of them. I had a coach once tell me that, you know, the old adage that uh, sports build character isn't true. It reveals character. And so do tough times. So one of the things besides pray, 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 pray that we need to look at is understand that God is going to take care of our needs. Have faith in that. We, we are so far from a devastating plague and yet there are concerns that people have and so they're buying irrationally. Don't hoard. Buy what you need. I haven't been in the grocery store yet that I couldn't find the necessities other than toilet paper. But even that, you can hunt it down if you go to more than one spot. But part of that reason is because of people's fear. Don't live as a people in fear. I know this has been going on or has been on the horizon for a few weeks. So I know... <laughs> that many of us have already been stocking up a little extra. 
And it's kind of like the theory of how much money is enough money. The answer is always a little bit more. It's the same that we're dealing with food. You're okay. You're going to be okay. This has an ending. The, 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 the distributors and the clerks are, are doing yeoman work. How interesting it has been in the last two decades that we've seen some of the thankless jobs, whether it be first responders, law enforcement, and such, or now grocery store clerks and truck drivers and people that are hauling boxes, how important we understand as a community that we're all in this together and they are working and they are providing and we are receiving. So be careful with what you buy. I'm pretty sure, I'm very confident that when you have needs they will be provided for. That is who we are as a community of faith. We live as if we know this is all taken care of. The third thing is so simple that I hesitate to use it, and I think I've talked about it before. Be kind. Be nice. I recognize that we're all under stress, and whether it's somebody in your home or people out elbowing each other in the grocery stores, looking desperately for that one more pack of four toilet paper that's there. I've seen people who have been extremely generous. I was at the Kroger, and uh, there was a person that took the last of the toilet paper, and I went, oh, well, there you go. You always wonder who's going to take the last piece of pizza and who's going to take the last roll of toilet paper. But there was an old lady that was looking for the shelves, and the person gave the four-pack to the lady. Good for you. You may be watching this. But I've also seen some things that have just kind of frustrated the heck out of me at the drugstore and this lady was just climbing all over a farm tech that I don't know what the situation was but clearly things weren't happening the way the lady wanted them to happen and she was yelling and I'm behind her and I'm thinking do I interfere do I say something you know but within a couple of seconds after she yelled at her she said I'm just leaving and stormed off and I kind of went <laughs> and I walked up and I could see that the farm tech lady was, was shaken and uh, I said well that's over do you need a minute and she said oh I'm okay I said why don't you go take a second she was on the verge of tears I said it's okay and I'll make sure it's okay from the people behind me. It's okay for her to take a minute, right? And they're like, uh, uh, uh. And so she went and took a, a wasn't even a, a full minute, and she came back and said, thank you so much, I needed that. And I said, well, you've made my day because you're here working, and uh, I, I need to pick up some medicines, and thank you for doing that. And it just cheered her up. Be nice to people. Even under duress, how much more important is it to be nice to people? What better way to show the light that our current situation in most cases is causing us to keep it under a bushel because we have to be home, but those times that we're out, how important it is to show a smile or a kind word even when you are also under duress and Pressure. As Peter speaks so clearly about what is important, that gold will disappear even when it's refined by fire, but your faith should not. Your faith should not. Be kind. Oh, okay. Is it recording? All right.
Take 14. So I know that we can't shake hands right now and we can't hug. Um, I have to admit I'm going through with withdrawal with, without the hugs. But here's, here's something silly that you can use as a spiritual discipline. I, when, when we're driving down the road or walking down the street, just wave. Wave at people. You know, you got the, the Harley people that have their, their little wave down here. And then the, when I was a landscaper, we had, we had a two-finger wave that we, we waved at all the other trucks going by. Just, just I, you know, put your hands. I've usually got mine at 10 or 2 o'clock or something like that. And, and then I just kind, of, just kind of wave. I'm waving at everybody now. Let them know that you know they exist. And you'll also see um, who's on their cell phone because they're not going to pay attention. But wave at people. We used to do that all the time, and now we just kind of go about our day too busy. But we are all in this together, and it's, it's kind of a way of acknowledging that we're all in this together, that we are trying to get through day after day. And we can do this. This is going to pass. We're going to get on the other end, and then we'll find out if we've done anything that either made Jesus cry, as we like to say, and the praise band likes to say, or we've done something to, to grieve him, or we've done something to make him rejoice. That is what we're trying to do as a faith community, as the community of Rochester, or wherever you're watching this, Canada, for crying out loud. Do something that's going to bring a little warmth, a little light, which is what we're called to do. Be a people that is not, exp not living out the misery, but that we are bringing joy, the joy that we have in our hearts as a conquering people. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, almighty God, we pray today that in these times of uncertainty, you will reveal to us the greater part of the plan, where we go from here. Lift us up. In all circumstances, let us be a people that can find joy in you. You provide for us all that we need, the tools, the blessings, the opportunity. This is where we come to you to be revealed in all of these things. Let us do this in our relationships and let us do this in our prayer time and as your son showed us and taught us to pray let us embrace every word and everything and be more than conquerors hear us now as we say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when so
sorrows like sea billows roll. Thank you for joining us. I hope this brought you a measure of peace and understanding and now receive this blessing. May the God that has gotten us through every storm in our life take us and hold us and keep us safe 
in the good times and those that are troubled. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.